Hi, today I'm going to draw and paint a simple pumpkin. I've got this gorgeous pumpkin image from Pixabay. It's a site that you can use to uh, do paintings and things and you don't, there's no copyright issue. I always donate something though. They ask you to do donate a coffee to them via PayPal. So that's a way of supporting them. So a lovely pumpkin shape. I just love this sort of squashed uh, sort of bulbous shape and I love all these seeds inside so I'm just going to do a very loose drawing of that um, the paper I'm using is two, it's a Two Rivers pad Two Rivers is a handmade paper it's absolutely gorgeous uh, details of this will be uh, on the screen in the caption or in the description so to just get my drawing underway I'm obviously making it smaller making the oh, and I'm actually drawing with Sorry, a Wolf's, Wolf's Carbon uh, Royal Sovereign Pencil is 2B. This is carbon. It's not charcoal and it's not graphite. It's somewhere in between. It's a lovely velvety, velvety um, pencil. And as you'll see, when I actually do bring in the watercolour, it just sort of is quite melty and gives lovely velvety shapes, velvety, a velvety look. I just like these really exaggerated pumpkin features. I'm going to pretend that there's just the pumpkin, the main one. I'm not going to draw the cut piece as well. I'm just going to draw small. Actually, I've done that a bit misshapen, so I'll just have to lose that. Okay, so then in there, so a bit of a cut. It looks like it's been chopped quite roughly, you know, um, with a hatchet perhaps. <laughs> so it's got a nice, uh, interesting texture, interesting shape. I particularly like the way that the seeds are all racked up and sort of stacked together in the flesh. So I'm going to get those in. I'm going to have some uh, coming out of the side and some really in evidence which are in, actually embedded in the middle of the flesh there. I'm actually, I've actually planted some pumpkin seeds this week because I've got an allotment recently which is absolutely brilliant, something I've wanted for years and I've actually bought some pink pumpkin seeds from a seller on Etsy and they're organic and they look a lovely colour pink so I'm so excited to see them when they do start to shoot through. Only problem is I haven't got the ground prepared properly in the allotment yet so I'm going to have to just buy a big, bigger and bigger pot, you know. I'm making up the, um, the sort of stalk. It, it, it isn't in the picture as you can see. I'm just imagining how it might be uh, like a sort of fairy tale Cinderella type twisting stalk and then they've got these lovely sort of tendrils and things haven't they okay so this is just a loose little pumpkin so to start off uh, I'm going to use a size 3 round brush no actually a size 6 round brush and uh, I would usually wet the whole pumpkin but because I've already painted on some blacky blacky you know grey colour with the pencil I don't want to get too wet straight away because this this carbon will you know dissolve into the into the paint so I just want to Avoid that for a minute. But this part, the, the rind, you know, the skin is darker than the flesh. So 
I'm putting that on now. I'll add a little bit of burnt sienna to that. No, that's gone too brown. No, instead I'll use some cadmium scarlet. Let's add some cadmium scarlet to that and a bit more Windsor orange. So I'm going on top of that runny uh, wash I just put on a second ago. And already I'm trying to leave some of the previous wash showing through and leaving some ridges just to help us get that look there. Right, so the flesh inside is much paler and much more orangey. I am purposely going to avoid some of these pips. And I'm purposely leaving a thin sort of millimetre or two gap in between the rind and the flesh, the skin and the flesh, so that I haven't got any risk of it running in just there just yet. Now see where I've touched into that carbon, see it's starting to sort of dissolve a bit. Quite nice. Just zoom out a bit more. <coughs> okay, so a bit more of the pale orangey flesh with this pale wash of Windsor orange and a little bit of burnt sienna, just a little bit. <coughs> now for a little bit of variety, I'm just going to add a bit of Windsor yellow. in this fleshy area as well. And I'm just scooping past, uh, uh, scooping on the sort of base of each of those pips, seeds. <clears throat> right, so I've got some colour on now, basically. Okay, what I want to start to try and do now is if I uh, look upside down at that image, if you, if you look upside down at things, you can see shadows a lot more easily in colours. And um, you can see that this part of the flesh is more sunlit than that part. It's a bit paler. And inside there is sort of a darkish, you know, definitely a dark, darkened, dark orange colour. So to get that, I'm going to use orange's complement on the colour wheel, which is actually blue. So there's sort of cadmium scarlet Windsor orange, so those two. So if we take those two and go straight to the centre of this wheel and then look what's opposite, well roughly it's a blue, it's a Windsor, um, French ultramarine blue and cobalt blue or Windsor blue. So somewhere in between those two blues, so I can mix a bit of each of those blues with that orangey red and that should give me a nice dark brown. So let's do that now with a small brush. So I'm using a size three, size three round. So I want more more control now. I don't want it to be so uh, the brush to be so big. So let's zoom in a bit on that. Okay, so a bit of Windsor orange. A little bit of cad scarlet, those were the two colours that we that we um were looking at just now. Then a tiny speck of Windsor blue and a tiny speck of French ultramarine blue. Now that's quite dark, isn't it? I'm just gonna add a bit more Windsor orange just to lighten it a bit. And then this very dark piece. Let's get that in now while there's still a bit of moisture in the center of the pumpkin. There's a little bit of a touch of it over there. And there's some fine bits in between the pips, the seeds, okay? A bit there. Maybe a few little specks under those. A bit in there. And I don't want to lose all the pale colored flesh in the center of the Pumpkin. I just want to give a few little, you know, sort of grooves and marks to indicate the fleshy nature there. 
and then I'm just going to add a little bit more Windsor Orange and add a bit of this dark, you know, into the base of my pumpkin there and maybe just a little bit there in that crease. So I'm just going to drag some of those very that, that very dark sort of Windsor orange with the Win, uh, Windsor blue and the French Ultramarine blue up the skin now, you know, into there, into the neck. And on the shoulder there, where it's sort of uh, fanning out, I want it to be a bit more bulbous looking, so I've put this dark orangey blue. And now I'm going to moisten it down in, just to give that little sort of curve, to make, to make this feel curvier, you have to put a bit of shadow somewhere. Yeah. We can just show it to there, okay? So I'm just going to add a bit more uh, hot orange, a bit more hot orange and a bit more card scarlet, just to add a bit of more juicy colour at the top. Yeah, that's that's sort of it, and blend that into that moist bit I just created there with the shadow colour, and then again a bit more of it. See, this is the highlighted sort of bulge of the pumpkin and I'm just adding a bit more juicy colour and same again on the, and the outer part of that skin there a little line of this reddish orange rind colour and then I'm going to drop some in there and in there Because if you can see in the flesh here, it's a darker red and then there's like a pale yellow stripe and a pale yellow stripe there. Same with this one. There's a very thin pale orange mark. Then it's a bit darker and then it goes lighter. So I'm just going to try and achieve that with some Windsor Orange. Windsor Orange there now. Let's get that. I'm leaving a sort of rim there and there, roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect. And it just gives the uh, pumpkin a bit more realism. Same with this one. <sighs> Although this is the lighter one, the lighter section, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm, I'll use a lighter, much lighter addition. And very carefully skim around there just to give that white ridge its space. Then I feel like overall the flesh, you know, and the colour within the pumpkin could have an orange glaze on it. So I'll do that now. So now I feel I need a little bit of a sort of cast shadow. So I'm just running an orange mix through the base there, like that. And then I'm going to drag up a runny orange, just Windsor orange with a little bit of French ultramarine blue to create the stalk. Because into this I'm going to add a, a, a bit of green, but I just wanted to get a sort of dulled orange base. Now this, the, the green I'll use is uh, sap green, just a bit of sap green and mix it in with the orange on my palette so that it isn't too strident and then just drop some green into that and where it gets more to the tendrils let's have some more green quite a lot of wiggly tendrils there Okay, so now I'm just going to add a bit more of the dark green in the middle. Right, all the time it's sort of, you know, drying. I'll just zoom out a bit. Yeah. All the time it's drying. Okay, 
so I can then go in into the drier painting minute second by second minute by minute a smaller brush perhaps like a size zero a small one moisten that let's just pick up um, a little bit more sap green and a little bit of French ultramarine blue and then a little bit of Windsor orange that's quite a strong green that's been oranged let's go right in the center there and pick out a few dark darks you know to really push that uh, center the heart of the, the pumpkin and drag out a few separating lines between the seeds and again up into this stalk let's have a few sort of striations you know because it does it's ridged it's quite knotted you know the the stalk and by adding these thin dark green lines now into the slightly moist paper we get a soft ridged look and I'm just going to do a little bit of this stripy green down there so the viewer sees it again somewhere else in the stalk and then where the tendrils are really quite um, fine I'm using a fine brush now just to do the finest little bit there the shadow now I'm going to add a bit more of this green dark green mixed with a bit of the orange to put in the base just run in there and finally I'm sensing that see this bit here needs to be a bit darker right? so I'll add some cadmium scarlet and some Windsor orange that sort of strength and drop it up in there and then taper it away and then finally one one or two lines up the pumpkin skin those are a bit regular I don't want them to be too set just again to give that ridged wiggly feel to the skin and a little bit more on the right hand side as well so while I've still got a bit of moisture in places I'm going to go in now with this uh, carbon pencil again and just re just push some features of the pumpkin like there see that really rich velvety black in there now that's coming okay and let's just accentuate some of the ridges there on that piece you can you know go with your own feeling on this I did want to push that ridged look there a little bit I'm just being quite loose with my sketching okay. and I think uh, just a little bit over there now let's get the heart of that really dark this is a sort of little warm-up exercise for maybe when I do a more considered pumpkin but I like to have these play times just to get the feel of it and get it out of my system type thing so i hope that's helped and i'll see you in the next clip